Hi everybody, it's Melissa from 70 Acres Studio. I am going to be making a, um, a wire wrapped uh, pendant that is actually a hinge and you can actually open it up and um, change the stone out or put, other, put another collectible or favorite charm or whatever in the middle of it. So let me switch over to the overhead and show you the sample that I've made. Okay. Um, this is basically a cage. You start by making a frame and then you do some wire wrapping around it. And I decided to add some uh, beads to it that would uh, complement the piece of fluorite that I have on the inside. I've also added a, um, a, feature, um, a feature bead here and some moonstones on either side of it. Okay, and then I've also made an... Um, basically a figure eight uh, clasp to hang on a chain. Okay, um, so let me let me get set up and we can uh, get started making one of these. The feature stone that I'm going to be using today is a piece of blue agate and uh, or I think it's actually lace agate. It's uh, very pretty and I think it'll make a, a nice little pendant. Okay, so on this one I started with um, 14 gauge wire uh, for the frame and it was very very difficult to work with so I'm actually going to uh, use 18 gauge and I'll hammer it out to make the frame and basically you want to start by making a frame that will fit around your stone keeping in mind that if you want to swap this out with another stone or another collectible or charm or keepsake, then um, you'll have to make your, your frame that will fit um, multiple pieces. Okay, so I'm starting with some 18 gauge wire here. And I just want to be able to roughly look at this and see how much wire I'll need to go around it. Okay, so this is roughly four centimeters because you don't want the frame to be right up against it. You want to have enough space to work around it. And it's roughly three high. So that's 14. I'll need, I'll need say, a good 16 um, or maybe even 20. It's always better to have a little extra because you can always make um, you can always make swirls or spirals for extra. And you'll have to double this. So I am actually going to um, basically start with 20 centimeters and I think that that should be enough. I'm using a pair of flush cutters and cutting that off. Okay, and now you want to find the center of this. And I always rub the wire between my fingers to try and get it to smooth out. Okay. This is not dead soft wire, unfortunately. All right, so the center is roughly... 10 centimeters and now I'm going to make a loop in the top and I'm going to use this um, six six sized bail maker okay and I'm making a complete loop And then straightening out the sides. Okay, there. And now I'm putting that on top. Let's try and straighten out the wire. Okay, and I can see that I want to make the first bend right about here. 
making some chain nose pliers. Okay. And I'm making a bend. Okay, that's about that's about correct. So the second one needs to be say here. Okay, chain those pliers again. And a good sharp 90 degree turn. And that's not exactly centered, so we can do that, okay? Okay, so that fits pretty good. And now for the bottom, fold it over this way and okay so there is the first the first frame and what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take some round nose pliers And I am going to make a spiral here that will support the stone in the back. Okay. It will start anyway. And then I'm going to make a small one here on the bottom also so that we can add an accent piece let's try and straighten that out a wee bit come on Not the best spiral, but it will work. Okay. So now you've got like an S here on the bottom. And let's just make sure that it fits. And it does. So what I'm going to do at this point is... And now I'm going to hammer it. This will work hard in it. And make it stronger and I do want to do that because I'm using a thinner wire uh, than I was than the first example I showed you So I'm liking how that looks now, and this will end up being um, wired together. So 
that is the first that is the back so now we can do it basically the same way again and this one I'm going to make it instead of 20 I'm going to go to 25 that way I have a wee bit more material to use for um, the front. Okay. I'm going to find the middle of this, which is about 12 and a half. 12 and a half, and I'm going to make another loop just like I did before. Okay. And it's the same size, so that's good. And we're going to try and use the rear frame as a guide for the front frame. So right before there. to worry about is making sure that that spiral gets pushed out in the back to make room for the stone and these two can get pushed forward a wee bit okay Taking a few beads, I might need to go back and get some more. But now we're going to take some 22 gauge wire. This is from Parawire, and I really do like their wires. They're really nice. And you're going to take a length that you're comfortable working with. I'm going to take about I don't know, about a foot. And I'm going to take my nylon pliers and straighten out the end. Okay. Make it easier to work with. And I'm going to start on the back. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these two. So I'm going to leave myself a bit of a tail. And I'm going to do just a couple of wraps around here to secure this. And try and make it neat. Okay, and maybe I'll do one more. Okay, so that looks looks good. And I can snip off this end and tuck it in on the back.
And now you're going to just make some decorative wraps around the frame. And I guess I can start by adding a bead. And you want the wraps to be smooth and fluid, kind of like vines. And you want to remember that um, this stone needs space. Okay, you want to avoid kinks and you just want the curves to be nice and smooth. Okay. and fluid and that they should pop out a wee bit. And from this point I can go back up through this way. And if I want to capture this wire, this bead here, then I can go <coughs> back around go over this way and we don't want to forget about the spirals either we should be capturing them um, in here as well and let's put another bead on here can do one over here to capture this bead in the corner. Okay, giving our stone enough room here. So that's it from looking at the back. And the I think this one's getting ready to be tied off, so let's put let's put a moonstone on there. Find the hole. There it is. Okay. And I guess we can go over here and tie that. And what I'll do is I'm going to go around the, the bail here a couple of times, kind of tightly. And you can use pliers if you want. need help pulling the wire. And when you're ready to tie it off, you want to make sure that it's going around a couple of times. And then tie it off in the back. Clip it off and then curl the hook over the little end. <clears throat> Thank you. 
squeeze it a wee bit. Get it to roll over. Oh, I still see that end popping up. There we go. Okay. So that's the first piece. And this is the back. So this stone will sit in here like this. And you have to have to play around with the little loops that you've made and <clears throat> to get make sure that the stone will fit in there. Uh, we have quite a ways to go yet. Okay. So grab another piece. And again, you can use as long, long a length as you're comfortable with. So I'm actually going to make mine a wee bit longer this time. Okay. And the, the, main, the main goal of this um, is not only decorative, but to make sure that the stone is um, secure in, in the cage. You don't want it to be able to uh, fall out between two wires. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap this around the corner here a few times to give it a good foundation. Okay. And because we're trying to mimic vines, uh, your loops don't have to be that tight, but when you're trying to tie off or add on um, a new wire, you do want the wraps to be tight and secure. Okay, so I'm just going to pinch this down. There we go. And now I'll go back to the front. And we can add another, another bead here. Let's see. Wrong way, wrong way, Jose. Hang on. There we go. There. And you want to just make sure you're not going to get a kink when you pull this. Okay. Get yourself a nice smooth curve here. And again, avoid avoid any kinks. Okay.
Okay. And we do have to remember to push things forward in this area because we have to fit the stone in here. Um, let's go with one of these. We're just working to close up the major holes. If you're using a flat stone um, or a piece of metal in here, it's much easier to, um, to do it and you don't need as many wires, but I'm using loose stones here. So I do want to make sure that they are um, well secured. I think I'm going to do one more wrap here and then I think this back will be done. I'll have to go get some more beads for the front. Okay, let's do Moonstone over here. And I did want to try and fix. Let's see. Fix that one there. And yeah, I think I'm going to wait for a second. I'm going to do a wrap right here. Come on. There we go. So I think that's enough stones and enough wire on there. So I'm going to actually run this, <clears throat> run this over here on the corner and wrap it off. And this I want to be tight. I don't want it coming off. Okay. 
Okay, so that is actually the back. So the stone will go in here like this. Okay. And now we have to start working on the front. So this is how it's going to look. Okay. I have to get some jump rings for right here on the corners. And then we have to make the, uh, that'll make those hinges. And then we have to make a clasp and this is done. Okay. Let's get that on the front where it belongs. Opening up my jump ring. Never open up a jump ring uh, this way. Okay, you want it to go this way. See? That way it'll keep its shape. Give it a good, a good squeeze. Make sure it's closed, right? Open up the next one. Same way, twist. It can be fiddly, but just keep working on it. I find this very soothing to do. And it fell off. Well, I find it very soothing to do. I keep telling myself that. Yes, Melissa, this is very soothing. You want to do it. There. Ugh. Really now? Okay, let's evaluate and see what, what's going on here. Okay, that's the problem. That spiral got stuck. So we'll try going from this angle. That should work better. Much better. All right, so there is the cage, and we can hang an accent stone off here, or an accent dangle, and that is the front, so it goes like this, okay.
Okay. Okay. So now all that's left to do is to create the hook for up here. For that, I'm going to take a small, small bit of wire. You don't really need a lot. And we're just going to make an S, a closed S. Okay, trim this off. And finish wrapping it. And now we have a very, very simple little S hook. I think that that's all you really need at this point because it is quite elaborate already. And I'm going to give this a quick little twist and put it on here and close it. Okay. And this one I'm going to close a wee bit more. And there you have it, guys. Now you can hang this on the chain of your choice. You can hang it on a cord. Um, anything, anything that you like. Uh, but it's just a very pretty way to show off a feature stone um, and just have a little fun with your wire working. It's really, um, it wasn't that difficult of a project. Um, I will go ahead and add a little tiny dangle um, to the bottom here. And um, yeah, that'll be done. So I do appreciate you sticking with me and watching. I know it was kind of slow and a um, little bit um, clumsy, but, you know, I'm learning and I'd like to share my excitement um, on making jewelry with, uh, with all y'all. So thanks again for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. I'd love it if you'd please give me a thumbs up and a kind comment down below and uh, please do subscribe i also have a facebook group and um, you can join that the information will be at the bottom of the video so thanks for sticking with me guys i do so appreciate it so you all have a good day and i'll talk to you soon so long